Hey guys, a few days ago, Apple gave the internet a sneak peek of Final Cut Pro 10.6.2, which I should clarify has not been released yet. Now this forthcoming update will include a feature that many editors have been begging for. And I do mean begging since 2011. And the other feature is one I didn't even know I needed, but after using it, I can't imagine living without. So here's my first look at dupe detection and voice isolation in Final Cut Pro 10.6.2. Editors who work on long-form videos, features, or documentaries often wonder if the same clip or portions of the same clip were used more than once. They're often easy to miss if you have hundreds or even thousands of edits in your timeline. Prior to this update, there was no easy way to identify, much less locate, where these duplicate clips occurred. Apple calls this feature Duplicate Clip Detection, or Dupe Detection for short. Here I have a finished project from one of my product reviews. Before I output it, I want to be sure that I'm not using a duplicate clip or ranges of a duplicate clip somewhere else in my timeline. To identify them, I'll click the Clip Appearance button, then place a check next to Duplicate Ranges. Any clip with a duplicate range will appear with a caution tape looking strip in the upper third of the clip. Here I can see that there are duplicate ranges for this connected B-roll clip and this music clip, which is super helpful, but I need a bit more information, such as where each dupe appears in my project so that I can decide how I want to deal with it. I'll reveal the timeline index by pressing Command Shift 2. In the search field, next to the magnifying glass icon is a caret that when clicked on will reveal a new option, Show Clips with Duplicate Ranges. The list is filtered to include only the clips that contain duplicate ranges and in the sequential order they appear in my project. Selecting a clip reveals its duplicate in dark purple. When clicked on, the playhead jumps to that location in the timeline where I can then decide to replace it, trim it, delete it, or ignore it. Additionally, you can navigate to your duped clips directly in the timeline by selecting one, then pressing Command Option Right Arrow to jump to the next dupe, and Command Option Left Arrow to jump to the previous one. When dealing with duplicate ranges, I prefer to start at the top of the list and work my way down. I'll select this first music clip. The visuals on the clip in the timeline tell me that this range of music is being used elsewhere. I'll click the dupe in the list to jump to that clip. Here I can see that only the first part of the music is being flagged as a dupe. So the question becomes, how do I want to deal with this? One way would be to trim the head of the clip past the duplicate frames. Notice that as I trim the clip, the duplicate range graphic on the first music clip updates in real time. Once the dupe range has been trimmed out, the clip duplicates are removed from the list in the timeline index. But I happen to like where this music starts, so I'll undo that trim and deal with this duplicate range another way. Jumping back to the first clip, I'll press Shift F to reveal that clip range in the browser. There's a section at the end of the music that will work, so I'll set an endpoint where I want it to start. In the timeline, I'll copy the clip, then press Option R to do a replace from start edit. I'm now using a different range of the music and the dupe ranges are removed from the list. Before I move on, however, I need to press Command Shift V to paste the volume attributes that I copied from the clip I just replaced. So with the first dupe dealt with, I'll move on to the next one in the list. Here I have connected B-roll of some GoPro footage. Selecting the dupe, the clip ranges appear to be identical on both clips. I'll press T to call up the slip tool, then slip the second clip earlier in time. As I drag, the duplicate range graphic updates with the trim. Once I've trimmed past the duplicate frames, those clips are removed from the list. As an editor, there's something super satisfying about having items being automatically checked off for you as you work. Moving to the next clip in the list, I can see that the duplicate ranges occur during the transition. This is because I'm using a wipe transition to show the difference between the ungraded and graded version of the same clip. So the duplicate ranges only occur where each clip overlaps to create the transition. In this instance, I can ignore the duplicate frames because they were intentional. For this next duplicate, I can see that the latter part of this kelp forest shot occurs somewhere else. I'll press Command Option Right Arrow to jump to the duplicate. Because this shot is so similar to the previous one, I'm going to press Shift Delete to temporarily replace it with a gap clip until I can locate another shot. Finally, I have the Ripple logo appearing twice at the end of the project. I'll delete the second instance of the graphic and its transition. Looking at the timeline index, the only duplicate items remaining are the two identical clips separated with a transition. 
With Final Cut Pro's new dupe detection feature, you now have an elegant and systematic way to deal with any duplicate content in your projects. One of the most exciting features of Final Cut Pro 10.6.2 is a new voice isolation enhancement that, as the name suggests, isolates voice frequencies from noisy environments using machine learning. Before I show it to you, I need to point out that this feature only works on Mac OS Monterey 12.3 or later. So here's a shot of me that I recorded with the built-in mic of a GoPro camera near a busy shoreline at Catalina Island. Let's take a listen. I'm in a pretty noisy environment. You've got ocean sounds. There's all kinds of people around. You get the surf. It's kind of noisy, so I want to hear how this sounds. In the audio inspector, I'll place a check next to voice isolation, then take another listen. I'm in a pretty noisy environment. You've got ocean sounds. There's all kinds of people around. You get the surf. It's kind of noisy, so I want to hear how this sounds. Pretty impressive. Let's push this even further by increasing the amount to 100. As the clip plays, I'll toggle the effect on and off so you can hear the before and after. I'm in a pretty noisy environment. You've got ocean sounds. There's all kinds of people around. You get the surf. It's kind of noisy, so I want to hear how this sounds. The other thing is that this GoPro has this unique housing that allows water drainage from the mic so that you can be underwater, come up immediately, and have decent sound. I'm going to test that in a moment. The voice isolation is so good because the AI has been taught what background noise is using thousands of data points so that it can accurately distinguish between noise and human speech. Let me show you another example that without machine learning would be nearly impossible to fix using conventional audio tools. Here's a clip of me sitting indoors at my favorite local cafe. I'll play it for you. I'm in a pretty noisy environment right now in a cafe with uh, wood floors and a lot of glass and a lot of people here, so it's pretty noisy. I'm in terms of noise, this clip is a case study of where not to record and what mic not to use. I want you to hear how the voice isolation works using a worst case scenario recording. I'll enable voice isolation, then set the amount to 75 and play back again. I'm in a pretty noisy environment right now in a cafe with uh, wood floors and a lot of glass. As with the previous outdoor clip, my voice is isolated to be sure, but because of the extreme levels of background noise, some of my voice frequencies are being stepped on, and I sound like I'm talking underwater. In this case, I'll reduce the amount to 60 in playback. I'm in a pretty noisy environment right now in a cafe with uh, wood floors and a lot of glass and a lot of people here, so it's pretty noisy. I'm using the built-in microphone of this camera. I'm not even using an external mic. At this value, you can still clearly hear my voice, but with less distortion and the background noise is at an acceptable level that does not distract from my on-camera delivery. So what did you guys think of the new features? Please leave your comments below and give us a sub if you're not subscribed already. And we'll see you next time on MacBreak Studio. Thanks for watching.